How's it going, everyone? I've got my friend Joe here with a, a bunch of different instruments we're going to show off today, right? Yes. When we're talking about the SWAM instruments, one of the things that's really important is knowing how you can get the most out of the realism of the engine. And you can't really do that if you don't know the real instrument and all the different artifacts and different things you can do with the instrument to make it sound realistic. So. One of the first things I'd love to do, Joe, I see you've got a bassoon there, mm -hmm. uh, is talk a little bit about you know the air pressure. And when I'm trying to play louder with this instrument, um, how it changes the timbre and what, what happens when you play a little bit louder. Right, so when you play a little louder on bassoon and really all the woodwinds, you're going to change the timbre. It's going to pick up more of the higher partials of the instruments and fill out the sound. So it's not just getting louder. But you might hear even the buzz of the reed a little bit more and and some of those tones. So what we're getting at is that getting louder is not as simple as turning a volume up. Like there's actual artifacts that come through, harmonics that come through, partials. And... Right. As, as we get louder, certain partials speak more and you get maybe a little bit more of a reedy sound and maybe even a little bit of the buzz of the physical reed as you play. So in order to approach that on the SWAM instrument, I've got this expression pedal and I'm able to play a little louder. And pull it back. And as you can hear on that instrument as well, we're getting more of those things coming in. It's not as simple as just getting louder. Let's get a little more complicated with that though, because this instrument also has things about it that I can hear. I'm sitting right next to you and I hear the notes. Um, I hear the keys when you're pressing the notes. There's a lot of keys on this instrument. There are a lot of keys on the instrument and the physical keys, um, because they're long, have weight to them. And as you're playing, you'll hear the key clicks as they go. Just if, I, if I'm playing silently, you can hear a lot of the physical movements. And that adds to the realism in the sound, if you can hear that. So without that, it would really start to sound pretty artificial. And one of those things where you're listening to it and you're like, well, it sounds like a bassoon, but something's missing. Um, I notice on the SWAM instrument, I can increase that key noise and really hear it a little bit. Or I can decrease it. And I guess that's kind of like something you have to think about with whether you, ha you have a really intimate performance or not, right? If you're further away, the sound of the instrument's gonna travel a lot more than the key clicks and things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, that's one of those things that you hear a lot more when you're up close than when you're farther out in a hall. So if I'm a scoring uh, musician, I, that's why I might want to have less or more key noise. If I'm trying to create a solo bassoon playing a spooky melody or something, I might want it to seem really intimate, or if I want this to sound like it's part of an orchestra, I probably wanna hear less of the key noise. That's really neat. Um, you can do the same with breath noise too. So I can actually on this instrument rattle in, um, kind of dial in a little bit more breath noise or dial back a little more breath noise. But one of the other things I think I'd love to talk about while we're on the subject of breath is articulation. So um, what does breath have to do with when you're going to play these notes separately or string them together? How does that work with a bassoon? So with bassoon, we do a lot of movement with our breath to differentiate articulations. If we're playing staccato, we are starting and stopping our sound quite a lot through the utilization of our breath. And then there are times when we are, of course, playing smooth through with, in a legato, where we're just breathing straight through the instrument. And each of those will sound different. That's really neat. And one of the great things about the SWAM engine is if I want to approach that, um, you can differentiate the notes by really allowing some space between them. And I'm looking down at the screen and it's showing a full attack. So it's letting me know that it's attacking it. But if I keep my hands and try to portamento it a little bit and make it a little more legato-like, I've got the ability to do that. Now, what about vibrato? Is vibrato a sort of on-off thing, or can, can you gradually like put in vibrato on a bassoon? Bassoonists absolutely change their vibrato based on what they're playing and notes they want to highlight. So as I'm playing... Uh... 
So yeah, it sounds like you can kind of pick and choose which notes you want to add the vibrato to, and you can ratchet it in and out as you want to. And that's one of the great things about Swamp too, is that I'm using my pedal for the expression controller, and that frees up my modulation wheel to add vibrato, but it's not a simple sample on or off with vibrato, so I can kind of bring it in in the same way. <laughs> So I can go from straight tone to vibrato in a variable way, which is great. And I can adjust the vibrato depth, with I'm sure, which I'm sure you're doing by, you know, the amount of breath that you're pushing in, uh, you know, and kind of or where the the reed might be in your mouth and that kind of thing. So um, that's really neat. You know, I think some of the other things that we're talking about, since you are a woodwind specialist, uh, maybe would be best explained with a saxophone. You got a sax back there? I have my baritone with me. Let's check it out.